Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about static initialization blocks. I'm going to open up my web browser to javacjava.com, select menu, then Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to static initialization block. This tutorial will build on concepts from both my instance initialization block part one and instance initialization block, block, block part two tutorials. I highly recommend watching those tutorials before continuing with this tutorial. There are some major differences between instance and static initialization blocks. A static initialization block is not dependent upon a constructor to be invoked. A static initialization block is executed when the class is first accessed, either to create an instance or to directly access a class variable or static method. A static initialization block will only be executed once throughout the entire program. It won't matter how many objects you create or if you directly access a static member a bazillion times. Okay, let's come down here and highlight some code. And let's hit Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. Yeah, I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can easily create one by right clicking, selecting new, and then shortcut. Type in CMD, next, and finish. Okay, I'm going to uh, type in Java C, press enter. Okay, you should see all this stuff scroll by when you press enter there. If you get an error message, then go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory using the MD command called Java. I already have that folder, but uh, if you don't, it'll create it for you. And now I'm going to make another directory called a static uh, block change directory static block and then I'm going to notepad static block dot java static block dot java is going to be the name of my source code file okay let's go ahead and select uh, save on this here real quick and I've got three classes here right I've got a class duck right with a um, an instance initialization block right there okay you should be familiar with that if you watch part one and part two of the instance initialization block tutorials. Now I've also got this other class of goose here, right? And it has a static um, initialization block right here. And inside of that static initialization block, it will just simply display to the console goose, right? Whereas opposed to duck up here, will uh, be displayed in the instance initialization block. Now I've also declared uh, static uh, int my int equals zero. This is what's called a class variable, right? And then I've also got a, a my method down here, which is a static method. And it will just simply add one to the, uh, to the class variable my int. These are really don't serve any purpose other than to be called and show you how the static um, initialization block is actually executed. Okay, so let's come back up here and talk about this stuff here. So we've got our main method entry point here. So I'm gonna kind of play on the old duck duck goose game, right? You can only have one goose in the duck duck goose game there. So we are going to loop through five times calling the new duck, right? And the duck class has the instance initialization block in it, right? That will initialize right after the call to super inside of the default no argument constructor. Right? And I don't have that constructor here, but you know it's implicitly there if you've been following my tutorials. Now we'll come down here, <clears throat> and after we're done looping five times and displaying basically duck to the console there, we're going to loop five times here, and we're going to just simply directly access the um, class variable myInt using the class name dot myInt and adding one to it, right? <clears throat> okay, that will trigger the static um, initialization block to actually execute there. Now it'll only be executed once even though we loop through here five times. So let's go ahead and save this here 
And I'm going to clear my screen and we'll uh, compile it and run it. Okay. And we get duck, 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 goose. Five ducks and a goose. Just a single goose, even though we still loop through, through five times. All right. Um, let's go back to the website here. I just want to talk about what I had up here. Um, so... A static initialization block is executed when the class is first access, right? Either to create an instance or to directly access a class variable or static method, right? And that's exactly what I did. I just accessed this, a class variable, right? And the, the static initialization block will only be executed once throughout the entire program. So even though I accessed this five times, it was only the static initialization block only was invoked once, okay? Now let's go ahead and comment uh, this line of code here, and now we'll directly access the a static method from within this class. So let's see what happens there. Ready? Let's, yeah, let's make sure I saw, uh, save that. File save and recompile. I'm gonna clear my screen and let's run it again. Okay, same thing. When we ac directly accessed the my method, the static my method, using the syntax of class dot my method, right? The static initialization block was invoked, displaying goose to the screen, but only once, even though we actually, you know, looped through five times here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and do the last thing. Let's create an instance of goose and see what happens here. Right? File save. Let's clear our screen. run it again. Same thing. We created an instance of it and it was uh, same thing. It executed the, invoked the, um, the static initialization block just once. Okay, um, go back to my site here real quick. I said one other thing here. <clears throat> so a static initialization block is executed when it's first accessed. Right, either to create an instance or to directly access a class variable or a static method. So let's talk about this, this particular sentence before that because we just proved that. Now a static initialization block is, block is not dependent upon a constructor to be invoked. Right? As you know from the instance initialization block tutorials, it is executed right after the statement uh, called to super. So let's go ahead and put in the default constructor here for goose. And what we'll do, is we call our super, right? And then I'll just put in system.out.println. Goose constructor was invoked. Okay, let's go ahead and save this here, and let's clear our screen. Let's recompile this. Uh, actually, let's see what I'm, what I'm calling here. I need to actually call one. I'm going to directly access the my int here, and let's see what happens if the if the constructor actually even gets called at all, or what goes on, right? Okay, so let's compile this. Let's make sure everything's saved. So we got that. We got that. Save. And let's run it. Okay, get the same thing here. Now what we did not get printed to the console was this. So as you can see, um, these, let's go back to the website there, right? A static initialization block is not dependent upon a constructor to be invoked. Okay, so um, just basically it's executed when the class is first accessed, right? We're not creating an instance of it. We're not doing anything like that. We're just accessing it, and the initialization block will be invoked, right? Okay, so um, let's do the same thing with a my method thing here. Let's save that. Compile it, run it, same thing there. All right, now, once we create an instance out of it, right, our, uh, we are literally... This, this statement is going to invoke the constructor because we're instructing it to. So the new operator will create a new instance of goose, right? And then it will 
go ahead and invoke the no argument goose constructor right here. So it will have no choice but to display this. So it's going to be very interesting. What will be displayed first when we do this here? Will it just display, well obviously you know we're gonna get five ducks in a row, right? But then will it display goose or will it display goose constructor was invoked? Very interesting, hmm. Let's see, let's clear our screen, recompile and run it. Okay, so what we've got here is we have duck, 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 and then we get our goose um, static um, initialization block run right there. And as you can see, it was only run once, right? This thing looped through in the for loop and called the constructor to run five times. And we do one, two, three, four, five. We got five goose constructors. Now you'll notice the goose constructor ran after the static um, initialization block there. And the static initialization block only execute once. So um, that, that basically, I'm just gonna go over one more final review just so so we can, actually, you know what, I'll just leave you with some final thoughts at this point. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that, close out of that, and basically my final thoughts, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some stuff here. So the primary difference between a static initialization block and an instance initialization block is that the static block runs only once throughout the entire program. The instance initialization, is it, sorry, the instance initialization block runs every time a new instance is created. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.